What's up, Tim? What's well, up? Welcome back. It's another fine day. Fine Tuesday. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Tech Tuesday. My name is Ben. I'm Tim. His name is Tim, despite what <clears throat> the name at the bottom right-hand corner says. What you going to call me this week? <laughs> I don't know. I'll come up with it. I'm not really sure yet. Um, Drinker of much water. Drink. Hey, uh, you're drinking water, not just coffee or energy drinks no. to keep you awake. <clears throat> Nobody made coffee. I made. Well, no, I didn't make coffee. I did have coffee, so maybe I drink your coffee. Either either way, um, we'll jump right into questions as per usual. As long as Tim doesn't have any questions, quibbles, or fashion statement tips. Mm-mm. No, 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 it's good. Anthony Resurrection Garage. Can I run a four-hole spacer on a kill shot? Does it need to be an open spacer? Yeah, as long as it's not interfering with the throttle blades, have a go. Yep. you be all right. Yep. He follows up with, I would like to know if the software has a means of knowing when and where I will run out of injector. Is there any injector duty cycle value anywhere in the handheld or advanced tuning software? Thanks. Not yet. Mm. Um, until that's a thing, I've got some injector testing to do, which I'm just going to crank them wide open and then kind of let everybody know mm-hmm. where 100% really is. Because mm-hmm. they, will, they will go. Sure. They will go. Okay, Marty Mick Superfly226 says, um, I'm running a kill shot on a 302 small block Ford with a supercharger. Due to the hood clearance issues on my swap car, this is the best setup for me. Can you guys do a video on how to, he- how to set up a tune for the kill shot for those of us running Boost? Yeah, that's on the plan. Uh, in the kill shot tech series, it's, you know, it's the whole introduction of it. It's uh, capabilities, whatnot, the install, this, that, and the others. And then we're going to start getting into the boosted side of things. So I'm, my big thing is I'm going to try to convince the higher-ups to get me a supercharger for the Aces truck here, and I'm going to bolt the thing on, and it'll be a fun time. But sure, we do got a lot of boosted vehicles floating around here. It's mainly on our jackpot stuff. Um, but, yeah, kill shot something that I want to throw some Turbski at for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing is we do have s- videos, and I can try to attach them either in the description or up here in the top left-hand corner about um, how to hook up boost setups. Um, boosted setups, obviously there's stuff that you need to do on your own in the advanced tuning software um, or adjusting in the handheld for that. Um, but, yeah, with uh, the new series that's coming up here, um, we will be um, getting into a lot of that. So stay tuned even this week. So um, stay tuned for that. Super excited. We get a lot of people running kill shot boosts and stuff out there, quite a few YouTube videos and mm-hmm. whatnot. But I'd like to do my own, but yes. it's, it's exciting. Uh, Is there anything with regards to running boost on a kill shot that you – prefer or don't prefer as opposed to like the Royal Flush since it has a CDI box already built into its ECU? No. Or doesn't really matter? You're running on pump gas. I mean, you you run into a thing where we, we put out a lot of spark energy with our ECUs, mm-hmm. but I mean, if you're running E85 on a boosted application, you might run into not having quite enough spark, even though ours does a fine job at that. I've never personally ran out of spark yet, even on a kill shot and some of the weird stuff I've done. But... <clears throat> With yeah. a lot of boost and a lot of fuel that takes a lot of spark, you may want to look at possibly a Royal Flush. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a comment right there. Uh, Davidson Yankur 7565. Mm. He's running two 10s on a blow-through on E85 on a Royal Flush. And uh, it says no warranty, but it does work. <laughs> Subjective. Correct. Uh but yeah, and that's, there's a few things I've seen. I've seen different throttle body units out there running 800 horsepower with a bit of boost, and mm-hmm. they've got massive injectors, crank the fuel pressure way up, all kinds of wild stuff. But you know, these are these are installers and tuners. It's really reinvented the industry as right. it goes, anyway. So, you know, we get some of that. Question here, Still Dog Fab. Question: Colon. <laughs> Will you guys be able to add NOx sensor function? Mm. Currently, only in a jackpot. Because, you know, most LS motors come native with a NOx sensor, and it's an easy plug-in. You just got to tune the frequency and all that whatnot to listen for the event. Mm -hmm. Um, We're not really doing that in the the TBI systems and whatnot. I do have a customer that's running a a kill shot boosted E85. Actually, kind of like that, but just kill shot. Yeah, 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 all right. He's got his own kind of standalone full-plex NOx setup, Mm -hmm. which is fun. Um, 
but yeah, we're not going to really add that functionality right. in there because it's not our, it's not really our bag to be doing that. It's not our cup of tea. Well, even if we did that for every system, it would it would be a, a situation of like would add it into something smaller, like a can module or something like that, to achieve that later. If it if we decide it becomes a very very important thing to do. You already hinted at this question earlier, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it for the people so that we can cover it just in case. Mm -hmm. You can run larger injectors on the Royal Flush. I'm running two tens on a blow-through E85 application, and it's fine. No warranty. So as you touched on last week, um, some of the systems have the ability to change out the injectors in the in the software setup mm -hmm. wizard. Royal Flush is one of those. So, um, But the kill shot, it's not one of those things. Yet. So... So um, that's a good point. Um, however, if you do decide to do this on your own, um, it's nothing that we're trying to hide. I think you even voided a warranty on a on a system on your um, YouTube channel, so you can see what is inside one of these throttle body units. We're not trying to hide anything, but if you do decide to do that, it will void void your warranty. So I'm glad that he uh, that uh, David's pointing that out <laughs> i know we've said that many times but that is a very important thing um to make note so yeah it's so true <laughs> i only laugh because i know how many phone calls that you've gotten something similar and you're like yeah that's not gonna fly but you know I wish you have floated people's systems anyway and i have helped a few yeah. people out the, the the folks that i've helped out it wasn't people calling in being demanding and, and being crazy or uh, especially if they're dishonest, but uh, right. you know, it's like, hey, I did this thing, and I'm like, oh yeah, don't do that. Yeah, that's and still kind of help some folks out as we do, because we want we're not just going to beat people up over silly stuff. Like, yeah, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, it's like I'll read the book next time. I swear I will. Yeah, and you kind of get that pass a like, little bit, like being at the doctor's kind office. Of a, you know, I won't ever, I won't ever eat little Debbie's ever again. But I oh, can't stand a taste. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Oh man. Um, okay. I'll tell you what, give me a Luna bar for Tex and we're good. <laughs> I read the last one. You go. Yeah. Does it does it count if I read it and then he read it? No, you have to read it. Me in words. Uh, <clears throat> 1990. Bad doggy. Nice. Are you working on adding odometer for tracking mileage? Mm. It's very low on the list. Yes. But it is still on the list of when we... When we're doing GPS stuff, it'll probably honestly be a mileage tracker in a GPS thing, mm. but that's probably going to be in a future version of what we already have. But if you um, did watch in our last episode, stay tuned for other digital dashes like Dakota Digital um, that will have something like that already included in their dash display. Is that loud? <laughs> We'll have stuff like that in their dash yeah. display already included, so um, we will get to that probably eventually, not in the near future. I had a customer straight up use an aftermarket dash and hacked our network, and neat. Yes. is a proper nerd thing right there. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it, but... <laughs> Bad Doggy goes on to say, Noticed in full house CDI manual, it says coils are PN2011. Which is the smart coil PN? Actual, actual coils were PN2010, which is not compatible with the jackpot system without the CDI box. This is a good question. Um, our full house system is specially designed for a certain coil that we make. They're both smart style of coils. That was something that had to be explained to me even um, a couple months ago. I, I didn't realize it, but they're both technically smart coils. But one is designed to work with the full house, um, and then one are just regular LS style coils. Um, but he's just talking about the part numbers. You want to mm -hmm. explain the techiness behind why that is? Two tens are direct coils. They're yeah. hotter, nastier. They can take a hit, et cetera, et cetera. Smart coils, are the 2011s, they work with the jackpot or or your uh, factory um, ECU if you're running a GM, but those are smart coils. Yeah. Two tens are for full houses to put the heat down the pipe pretty hardcore. They're yeah. wired differently. Mm. So if you plug one into the other and vice versa, weirdly enough, the two tens, you can plug them in to the full house for a very limited amount of time. Yeah. And then they'll go bad. Yep. Uh, or let the magic smoke out. 
the if you use a 210 on a jackpot, you usually get a connect timeout. Yes. I've recently had somebody do that. They got the, the jackpot, and they got the full house, and they used the full house coils because they didn't want to use the full house at all because it's kind of big. They didn't have anywhere to mount it, so they used the coils, yeah. and it ate the ECU to death. Correct, correct. Um, Don't do that. So if you have those coils, run with the full house ECU. Um, if you have questions about how to hook that up or where to put it in your vehicle, um, give us a call. We'd love to give you some suggestions and things like that. Um, but, yes, don't run the 210 coils, um, part number 210 coils. Ooh, that's a good that tech short because we got the engine run stand running the full house in a oh, jackpot. That's fair. We'll do that. We might do that as well. Um, Dominic Terry, 12. So has some suggestions for us in our upcoming series. Super excited about that. Um, have the option to move the VSS speed to the speedo spot under the tack. Have a manual override on and off in the handheld for fan one and fan two. And three, tell Dominic how to dip the timing for nitrous input <laughs> so he can spray the old gal. Um, Nate, that's a lot, but Good that's, questions that's or good not. suggestions. Uh, there will be some more customizability with the handheld at some mm -hmm. point. That's just a graphic user interface. I think we only have one engineer that does that, and that mm -hmm. cat is busy right yes. now, let me tell you. Yep. Um, the manual fan override uh, one and two, I agree. I'll add it to the list. That's something yeah. good to talk that's about. That's actually a good idea. That could be a straight-up a disable-enable situation. Mm -hmm. um, I think in our future displays, I'd like to see more manual virtual buttons as it goes for stuff yeah. like that. Like, hey, I've signed this virtual button to turn a fan on and off. Yeah. That way it's not like it's internal I.O., mm -hmm. not external I.O., so yep. we could do all kinds of weird stuff with it if we really wanted to. Mm -hmm. The timing for nitrous input, um, yeah, uh, I'll have to check into that, uh, depending on what system he's running. General Grievous, single plane or dual <laughs> plane for your TBI setups. I've, I do both. I, I like all my dual yeah. planes. I like to run a bit of a spacer yeah, I was about intake to say. reversion and whatnot. Single planes just fine. I think we said that at the even, beginning. Even on the the old dump truck, dude, that thing, it's it's running like a Jags intake. Oh, but yeah. I forgot that you have that. You're wondering if you can run your Aces product on what you have? Exhibit A dump truck. Dump truck. <laughs> run by Tim. Yeah, we got a uh, old square body <laughs> dump truck. Um,. 307 got tired, put a 454 uh, Mark V motor in, so it has yes. the bigger ports in it. Story time. Uh, had the kill shot, took off the Tahoe, because I'm sure if you guys follow anything I do, you'll see that I had a 65-pound-an-hour injector kill shot on my Tahoe and put right. a, I don't even know how many, four or 5,000 miles mm -hmm. on the thing. I drive about 1,000 miles a week-ish, maybe more sometimes. Generally with a trailer or a tow dolly or some kind of equipment or piece of junk that I found in the field. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I put that on the dump truck and adjusted very few parameters and it fired right up. And it we had to fix other mechanical bits on the truck. But we got it up and running. That was a belt. I had to deal with a belt. Mm -hmm. Actually, my dad dealt with a belt. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it. I left. I had things to do. Put a kill shot on a 454, uh, four-speed manual gearbox, and mm. put five and a half tons of gravel on the back of it and hauled it around for a while. Yeah. It's great. I had it on an S10. That's another thing that I find very interesting um, is not only can you move systems around from vehicle to vehicle very easy, mm -hmm. obviously, but our handheld you, uh, interface can go from system to system. I know mm -hmm. one guy who um, I think he's actually one of our um, advanced or uh, not advanced tuners, um, one of our partners in the uh, tuning network, um, and he actually just uses one handheld. And he just brings it in for each of the ACES units that he has. Um, because that you can just switch it to mm -hmm. whatever unit that you're running. Which plug I find in, very interesting. Plug it in, update it, throw the tune at it. Yeah. Um, force it in the open loop. Trust your fuel map you made. <laughs> and take the handheld. Yeah. Um, some people will do that, and when they're doing installs, they won't let they won't leave the handheld in the car, right? Because they don't really want you to mess with the tune. We don't have a means of locking our tunes, mm -hmm. which has been a kind of a bigger request lately. Mm -hmm. Of some people, they'll do a tune and they don't want people to take it and sell it or 
mess with it and create liability That's issues. That's the bigger one. T Church one two five says, "Is there a fuel cutoff during deceleration setting in the handheld 2007 manual Corvette running a jackpot?" Correct. This Defco stuff right here. It's an 07 manual Corvette, a track car. Mm-hmm. It's somebody's doing time attack autocross or something like that with it, most likely. Um, if you're running Road Atlanta, you know, hey, stop in at Chattanooga. <laughs> Tell us said, what's up. Please. But, yeah, this is something we're adding. It's not in the jackpot yet. It's in some of the other ones, but they we, we meant to add it into every system. That's just a large undertaking to make that new channel of saying, mm-hmm. don't go into your super lean condition when you're decelerating. So right. you can keep the fuel in there. That way you tip back into the throttle. There's no change from going to lean to rich. It's just mm-hmm. staying rich. Giving you all the beautiful fire out the exhaust, pops and bangs that the crowd loves. And me coming from the drift community, I have towed a fireball before by putting a low amount of timing and a whole lot of fuel in there for fun because I even ran at night. <laughs> It'll I did also, see. pro tip if you got a C5 Corvette and you're doing that, it will melt the bumper. I did see some videos, but anyway. <laughs> Chris, Chrisola. Or Ula714 says, I'm having issues with my jackpot system. Supposedly it was the O2 sensors. My car won't fire up. Hmm. Yeah, it needs fuel, fire, and air. Uh, I've run into it before, depending on the, the jackpot build. I mean, the, the actual engine build for the jackpot. That if you got a situation where you, you hit the key, it fires up and dies. Hit the key, it fires up, struggles, and then dies. Generally, it doesn't have enough fuel in the table. Uh, on the Out on the dyno earlier where I was testing the jackpot TBI system to set a new fuel calibration, um, I was kind of running through the same thing. I'd fire it up, and it'd stumble around for a while, and I'd just sit there and eased in the fuel table offset until I got it nice and balanced, and then I went in and adjusted the table accordingly, so on and so forth. But as in the car won't fire up, verify your sensors. Make sure your crank and cam sensors wasn't magnetized or something silly like that. Um that happens. Mm-hmm. It, it'll give you a headache. It'll show signal, but do weird stuff. Make it not want to run. Go through our videos over here and, and look for the one that's uh, that I made on the Blazer mm-hmm. about the uh, sync versus no sync for checking to make sure your cam sensors work. If mm-hmm. you know, is it fifty eight? Is it twenty forty? Have it set right in the wizard. You know what's what's it really doing here? Right. Well, Tim, always a pleasure. Oh, I had a good time. To have you on board. Taking yeah. the time away for the people, pe- peeper, people, pe- pe- people, people, pe- pe- for the people. Awesome. For, Drinking for, is water. For you and For you and For them and All right. Hey, everyone. Thanks again so much for watching this episode of Tech Tuesday. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions about Aces EFI or EFI in general, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Tell your friends, your family. Make everybody watch this video if they're getting into EFI, um, or at least the Tech Tuesday series. And if you see Tech Tuesday Media anywhere else on social media, feel free to show it some love. But until next time, Tim, thanks again for joining us, and we will see all of you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Bye now.